Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for the next webinar in our, webinar in our Trade Around the World series. Uh, today, this destination is taking us to France. As usual, we are going to start with a short welcome video, so let's go around and play that. Greetings. My name is TJ Villamil, and I'm the Senior Vice President of International Trade and Development here at Enterprise Florida. Thank you for joining us on our monthly Trade Around the World webinar series. Here at Enterprise Florida, we serve our state's exporters through various trade programs, grants, and connections around the world. With over 20 international offices we, and access to 100, over 100 world markets, we want to provide our small businesses with relevant information and assistance when exporting to, to markets all around the world. We hope you add this webinar series as a resource to your toolkit of doing business abroad and take away some of the best practices when approaching new distributors or clientele in a particular country or region. I would encourage you to think of a few questions to ask at the end of our webinar and touch base with our regional trade managers and international offices at the end of this segment. They will be happy to serve you and your business through our trade programs. Because when you win, we win here at Enterprise Florida. So our goals are completely aligned. We know international trade is big business here in the Sunshine State and we want to ensure the best opportunities are available and accessible to you all to make sure that we help our small to medium-sized Florida companies grow. Let's get your products and services around the world. <laughs> Perfect. Alrighty. Thank you all for joining and thank you to TJ, our Senior Vice President, for our typical welcome video. As we all know, this next destination is taking us to France today. Before we get started, um, I have a short introduction. Um, for any of you who have been with us on previous webinars, my name is Madison Lawson. I am a regional manager of international trade and development here in the Tampa Bay area, um, but we do have regional managers located throughout the state. Now, before the webinar, we get into it, I do want to let you all know that this webinar will be recorded, so we will be sharing the link for it in a short bit after the webinar is done. Everything will be posted on our YouTube page. For all of you participants, you do not have your camera on and you do not have access to a mic. So we do encourage you to put something in the chat box, maybe tell us a little bit about what your company is or where you're Zooming in from today. And if you do have a question, please put that in the Q&A box throughout the webinar. We will get to questions at the end, but if you have something in mind, feel free to type it in whenever and we'll get to those after our uh, presentation is completed. So a little bit about Enterprise Florida. Who are we? We are a public-private nonprofit chaired by Florida's governor. Um, the way we operate is we are the state's prin principal economic development organization. So on the international side, we do two things. One, recruit international investment into the state to uh, promote new jobs and job growth and grow our state economy. But we also help existing Florida businesses, which is the purpose of this webinar, and giving them export assistance, export advice. We also have many trade grants that help our Florida businesses grow. So what we do have, which is a little bit unique to some other states, is we have a large variety of international offices that represent the state of Florida. And as we do this webinar series, we'll always have a international office representative giving a presentation on our market. So today is going to be our France uh, market and France oversees France, Italy and the Benelux region. Um, so I would like to now turn it over to Christelle, but again, remind everyone, please put in the comments where you're coming from today. And if you have any questions, type those in the Q&A box and we'll get to those at the end. So now I'll pass it over to Christelle, the director of our France office. Thank you, Madison. Bonjour à tous. Um, so I'm really happy to be here today. It's been um, almost 17 years that we are working with the state of Florida and France. So I apologize already if uh, a lot of you knows France really well, but I'm just gonna give you a little overview again uh, about basic information and uh, key fact about France and how to do business with France and also after the COVID uh, or in, in, middle, in the middle of COVID because in France is not completely done. We're seeing again a little bit of increase into the cases. So I just wanted to give you um, shortly information about France. France um, is really a centralized country, even if we have 13 regions. So Paris is still the central um, point of decision for government and uh, all the administration. Uh, is the third largest economy in Europe and um, it represents 16% of the GDP and it's a 3.5 billion of SMEs. Um, yeah, we have a lot of SMEs and I have to say they're really active as well. And also looking at um, doing business with uh, the US and Florida. 
Uh, in terms of customer, um, we represent 12% of the European Union, so the 27 uh, countries of the EU. Uh, and we also speak French. So uh, maybe you had already had Brazil and you had Canada. So that was an easy because in Florida, we speak maybe Portuguese or in Canada, you speak English. But in French, you definitely need to speak French to be able to do business or at least get someone in your team or uh, try to get uh, maybe an agent who speak uh, French as well on your site. Uh, here, I wanted just to show you the relationship between France and the US. So um, until 2020, France was the third largest trade partner in Europe of the US, but now we are the fourth partner and uh, Ireland came for uh, the number, th uh, number sorry, rank number three. And uh, we can see that they have a big sales going on. And I have to say that uh, we are between the third and the fourth partner anyway of the United States. Um, globally, we represent the 13 largest partner of the US. I want just to quote something, it's from 2018, but since I'm attending the Farnborough Air Show next week, I just wanted to say that in 2018, 38% of the uh, EU export to France was related to aerospace equipment. So we are hopefully trying to go back to this uh, uh, percentage right now is not really uh, uh, common and we don't have that much information because after COVID, but we're hoping that now with a new trade show, Dubai happen, Singapore trade show, so we hopefully uh, uh, looking to, to, to see this um, again export from uh, the US to France. Uh, in terms of, um, of the flu, that means that uh, we can see the US in 2020 in the COVID year was doing 47.1 billion. It's, um, it, we can see a plus anyway. So you export a little bit more into um, France and then France exported into the US 69 billion. So it's a plus 20% from 2020. So we see that definitely that the numbers are still there and it's not only PPA or equipment or everything. So we can see that uh, we went down a little bit on the graph here uh, of the US goods and services with France in 2019, 2020, but it's back on track from 21 and hopefully 22 will be a good year between the US and France. Next slide will focus mainly on uh, the Florida and France relationship. So like I said, Enterprise Florida opened this office in uh, 2005 in France and it was representing like Madison say, uh, we are representing France, but we are also representing Italy, Belgium, Luxembourg and Netherlands. Those three countries are called Benelux. So um, we, um, France is the fifth uh, partner, top trading partner of Florida in Europe and the 17th globally. As you can see here as well, uh, we see the bilateral um, relationships being like Florida export into France uh, 401 million, so plus is 33%, but you can see that France export less into Florida, but is also, um, it's not really something that we needed to see a huge difference because our French export decreased in 2021 for sure. And we can see that compared to the other states it's still the same amount, but versus the other country, France is doing really well because we can see that Italy and, um, and as well some other European country are really are minus than 10% uh, compared to the French um, uh, trade. So uh, on the right side, you can see them the the top merchandise and i will say that uh, there for me the user suspect um, sector because we are seeing uh, aviation um, aviation and aerospace and i'll put it also into transportation equipment because it's definitely onto it we have the medical and pharma being the number two and we also can see reaction recreational equipment sorry who can be uh, this one number third uh, ranking number third yeah so um Next one, I'm just going to show you the last um, the last four years uh, of the um, the last three years, sorry, of our export between uh, between uh, Florida to France. So basically, you may recognize yourself being part of the number if you are part of those um, top uh, 20 uh, merchandise. But as I was saying, we can see civil civilian aircraft engine and BART being number one. I'll call them a transportation equipment because they appear on the number on the on the top fifth. Um, as well, uh, orthopedics appliance, artificial body parts, 
being, being part of the medical device as well. Um, painting, drawing uh, by hand, collage, etc. Motor car vehicle for transportation person. Everything after you can see is also related to medical device and the pharma and the transport equipment. Uh, those three sectors will be representing, uh, I would say, big opportunity. And uh, I just wanted to show you today what the French sector looks like in three different sectors. Um, if you have any other question in other in other sector, I'll definitely be answering them on the Q&A. But I will focus uh, today on just um, aerospace, uh, then uh, uh, medical device and food and drink. OK, so. Um, up. So yeah, like I was saying, so that's those are the top French sector, but my focus will be definitely on uh, on three of them today. If you are in the fintech, uh, as sure tech, it's definitely something growing. And as well as Florida is growing, I think we have a lot of collaboration and opportunity between the two countries and the two um, territories. Clean tech as well, I didn't want to develop, but if you are part of this sector, it's a, a lot of huge opportunity as well, because a lot of cities are implementing um, some, um, some uh, specific program that uh, uh, international company take, can take part of it as well. Um, same thing for robotic. Luxury has been luxury for uh, a while. Uh, life science, and I'm going to particularly go to medical device. And uh, professional services, I have to say, it could include IT or Northern including IT. They're really doing a lot in, into the, the service sector. We can see a lot of things going on into recruitment, into consultancy and marketing services as well. The first one, I just wanted to give you an overview and I just put a um, few facts about the French aerospace sector in France. We have the fun bureau next week, but you know that the uh, one of the uh, biggest aerospace trade show is gonna be the Paris Air Show next year. So I'm assuming a lot of people won't be uh, uh, attending maybe this one, but uh, more French company will be attending the French one next year. So we hopefully can see you there under the Florida Pavilion. Um, just to give you a little bit overview of the sector, uh, the aerospace is the first uh, industrial sector in France for us. It represents 52.9 uh, billion turnover, uh, including 35.1 billion from the exportation. Uh, it creates uh, a little bit more, I would say there's 3,500 jobs. Sorry, 350,000 jobs, sorry. Uh, and um, we also counting as well the indirect job created by the subcontractor uh, in the area. Uh, we are the second largest uh, aerospace exporter. And uh, you can see as well, we have major players who are Airbus, Dassault, Thales, and Safran. So um, I just wanted to give you some information regarding what could be done. So R&D is basically representing 10% of the turnover in 2020 for France. And we know that the publish, uh, the, the, the sector is trying to recovering for the COVID and what happened during those two years. So we see now we are trying to launch the airplane low carbon, everything related to digital and connection. So uh, by um, 2035, we also see that hydrogen is also playing, uh, even if it's touching as well the clean tech, we can see the hydrogen is really something that in the aerospace industry, it's matter and that's more and more focused on this, um, on this uh, subsector. And um, as well, like uh, it's touching as well uh, the hydrogen because by, um, it should reduce by uh, two the CO2 emission by passenger and by kilometer in 30 years. So we are to get new uh, plane, new way of uh, flying people over to one place to another. So um, I can see at the moment that the French player are really trying to look uh, into R&D and the next generation of airplane. And um, I can see also that Airbus, even they, they're flying the 380, they're also thinking about smaller plane because of what happened. I think, I don't, I'm not sure all the 380 are full now everywhere, but uh, I'm sure we'll see some at Fonboro. But um, I have to say that those big payer that you see as well are present in Florida. And I just wanted to tell you that Airbus is there, Dassault is there, Thales as well, and Safran as well with five operations. So if you want also to get in contact, it's going to be hard. And I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to put you in the procurement list of Airbus, but definitely we can give you more information about how you can be referring to their procurement. What's the next step? So do not hesitate to let us know if you need more information into the aerospace and the procurement uh, of those big, uh, big uh, players. 
Um, the second one I wanted to push is because we have the Cial. The Cial is one of the biggest trade show in, uh, in Europe. So if you're in the food industry, you know that Cial is one year. The other year is going to be Anuga in Germany. So uh, the next one is going to come up. It's going to be in October, the, uh, the Cial in France. So it's basically a major food and drink. Um, this trade show is highlighting the innovation. So I think it's also time for... Um, to show you product if you can, if you have innovative products in the food industry. France is uh, also producing a lot and uh, is, is really doing, uh, um, I would say it's creating less, uh, is creating less, uh, co less companies, sorry, are there, but they are having a, a bigger uh, employee numbers. And that's what we put as well, the first industrial sector, because it's really employed more than the aerospace sector. Um, is basically the third sector with a positive trade balance in, in France in 2021. And we know it's a positive balance because nobody really stopped getting food during the COVID time. So, and it was so also, um, we also mentioned and saw that during the COVID time in France, uh, we went into um, different, I will say, um, mentality and we saw new things coming up so we have the major player like danone and lactalis they're also in the us as well um, danone is in florida but not lactalis but i have to say during this um, this time of covid we saw that the consumer at least in france and majoritarily in europe they also are looking at um, getting healthier more natural organic food sugar-free, fat-free, no additive, no G, uh, GMO. So we also saw um, a big tendency to go to ethnic, eco-friendly, um, uh, fair trade, uh, a little bit more by local, but that's basically when you're in a country and you're trying to do by local. I think in Florida, we have the same. But it's, um, it's really a trend that we saw that people are really looking at what is inside you, uh, the food product and... Uh, they're really uh, changing and we see a lot of things uh, going on and new product developed in Europe as well. Uh, fast and easy doing, that's what they want. The people wants to go fast and that's also something that in the US you know really well. I think you've been uh, hopefully before us, you had hopefully before us some uh, implementation of the, uh, I will say some example because I used to live 10 years in the US. So you have like the doggy bag that in France, by the way, you don't have. So you also have like takeaway that uh, for now is really now after COVID completely normal in France, but before it was not, restaurant was not all of the time doing takeaway. Um, they wanted to uh, also look at a different way of ordering. So we see that more and more, um, I would say uh, e-commerce, a platform also uh, opening about uh, trying to identify uh, new innovation product or trying to sell into new uh, e-commerce platform in Europe. So that's um, also uh, this trend as well goes, the e-commerce goes with the e-payment and the fintech solution. So uh, this sector also um, is bringing a lot of um, transportation logistics with the e-commerce and as well a new way of paying you uh, uh, and using fintech and uh, e-payment, I would say. Uh, also during COVID, we saw that the supply chain was really, really, uh, uh, really struggling. Uh, we had people uh, really spending less, but raising the, uh, we saw the employment rate raised, but we saw that the company was trying to reinvent themselves and trying to do more collaboration. And I have to say they had to uh, identify new research, trying to identify a risk. And uh, I think it was getting a new motivation after COVID to move forward into uh, innovative food and, and changing, I would say, a little bit uh, the food context. Um, something you need to take in mind that um, with the Brexit, you have a lot of more company uh, in the UK, a lot of company trying to have a base in continental Europe. So we saw a lot of um, uh, product or people that you may work in the UK who are already trying to move to a continental Europe. So that could be, that could be a way as well to see, um, to identify if you a partner in the UK, if you already have one, work already on continental Europe, or if they have any uh, uh, presence in continental Europe and potentially could be France, and that could be a, a good, um, a good uh, move for you to, to, to be able to sell in France. Uh, I just repeat again that really the fourth trend will be healthier natural food, uh, fast and easy going, 
authenticity and now the quality tra tracking and everything. And really is about the company to identify the research, the risk and trying to uh, be innovative. Um, the, the food and drink in France is the second European market in terms of turnover. We have those labels with AOC and uh, label d'origine uh, producteur. So those are the two labels that you can get in France if you certify the authenticity from a region or from a specific uh, country. Um, and like I was telling you as well, that you can see on the screen that basically COVID e-commerce and system, they're very increased by 8%. And it was only 6% in 2019 in Europe. So it's uh, continuing growing. And we also, um, uh, I'm sure it's the same case, maybe in some uh, Florida city, we see those uh, um, new retailers, I would say, where we call that the garage retailer, that that means they're going to deliver in 10 minutes any food, any uh, grocery item that you need. So uh, we see a different way of um, delivering the consumer, the consumer. The third one I wanted to touch base with is the medical sector. I'm not gonna lie, we don't have a big show like Medica. So if you're part of the medical sector, you have to attend Medica. But we have also Sante Expo, other trade show that it can be interesting for you to attend. If you're targeting to, um, to meet buyers in the hospital or if you are ready with the process or everything. So I'll tell you a little bit later about what you need to take into consideration to get into the French market or any European market. Uh, France is the fifth largest market in the world for medical device. Uh, it's a 33 uh, billion turnover and uh, it's expected to grow uh, plus 2% in the next years. So uh, we see that uh, really we are increasing and it could be medical device related to the uh, elderly people, to the degenerative um, uh, also, um, uh, healness. Uh, we can see uh, things for the so many uh, medical devices that they can have a different use that um, that we can see a, a growing sector. Uh, I'm going to tell you about the four future trends that we've got. So basically, we have a population aging toward the civil economy. That's what I was telling you. So we're not like Japan or we like not like other countries where they have really an issue with uh, pop population uh, aging, but we still need to consider because we have a lot of uh, silver economy and it represents, uh, if you are in that area, I think it's interesting to see if your product is already sold in Europe and what's the, the value part and try to identify the opportunity you can get in some market. Um, because I'm not going to lie as well, some markets are really uh, mature like us like France, but some could be in Germany, but some of them could be like the Nordic, so could be other one that you need to identify. So I suggest as well that before getting into a specific European market, you may need to do a market opportunity or validation of opportunity in a market. Um, we also have an increase of uh, chronic disease and allergies. Uh, that's also raising the trends, the rise of health expenditure. That's interesting because we see that now the French government is trying to put together some uh, regulation on the, um, on the health expenditure and they're trying really to uh, do more uh, prevention than, uh, than uh, so that means more uh, space for medical device as well who can help um, about the eyes by uh, a lot of things that you can prevent uh, basically instead of uh, really treating the illness. And we have also the integration of the patient central digital tools. That means that you can definitely have an access and we are really below some of the country in France. That means that this digital tooling is starting to be um, implemented in some hospital, but it's really uh, not really connected yet with the social security system in France that is taking care of our health. Um, it's a different system. So that means you have a lot of tools who are now uh, under investigation by the French government to make sure that they can implement some kind of a uh, um, patient center uh, from A to Z in the process to make sure they can have everything. Um, I just wanted to point that the, um, the French demand in 2020 reached 40.3 billion for four different medical device equipment, mainly the diagnostic equipment, uh, yeah, I'm not going to comment on that because I think diagnostics have been used in the past year for a lot of uh, countries. Rehabilitation, surgery equipment, and medical prosthesis. 
So those are the four um, mainly article or product that the, the French were buying from, uh, from, uh, from companies. Um, I was telling you that um, also uh, all medical devices must be seized market in order to be um, able to, uh, to be represented and uh, have a, really a sign of conformity with the current European Union regulation and uh, classify medical device by risk. And since May 2021 in France, more uh, you have some technical device who needed to have a clinical trial. So um, if you had this presentation before, make sure you know that the new rule since May 2021 is in place. Uh, an advice for people uh, who are attending this webinar and they needed to get advice, I put three big things. Timing is really important on medical device. I mean, you need 18 months to 24 months at least to be in the market. You need to make sure you have a, a, a budget, a pricing in mind. I mean, you have to, buy, to get a budget into getting Europe. I would say don't go there if you don't have less than 100,000 at least. And then after you need to have someone representing you in Europe. So that means you need to have an agent, you need to, to use a consulting firm dedicated to uh, growing and get regulation, getting the pricing done, getting uh, um, everything ready for you. So make sure you have the right partner. So Enterprise Florida Friends Office can help you to identify those kind of people if you needed to. And at the end of my presentation, I'll show you as well some uh, EU portal link that it could be relevant for you. Those are the three sectors I wanted just to highlight. I'm just gonna show you on the next slide the, the other relevant trade show because we spoke mainly about those three, but I just wanted to tell you that Enterprise Florida is usually attending uh, France those uh, one. So if people, part of the, the audience are in the boating industry, we're gonna attend the Cannes uh, Yachting Festival in September, we're gonna also attend the Monaco Yacht Show. And I remember last year being with a few Florida company who did really great because it was the first show almost that everybody went back on track and he was outside. So that was uh, really interesting. Uh, the CL, I already spoke about it. Um, two are related to, um, to the aerospace. So um, I'm not gonna speak about the Paris Air Show in June next year, but Aeromart in Toulouse is more a buying versus solution and services. So it's a conference and it's a B2B meeting, matching meeting is in Toulouse and they also have Aeromart in Montreal for Canada, but this one is the French version. If you are in the composite uh, side, could be related to automotive, to plastic, to medical device, to auto, uh, aerospace, you have the Jack Composite show. Uh, if you never attend, I think it's really a chance to attend. I attend the last, uh, the last uh, edition, the first one uh, after 2019 were canceled. So it was really interesting to see the interest of people. And I think it was, um, uh, it will represent the future and trying to also identify new way of fiber of things that you can create. Uh, we saw that people are really uh, looking at doing um, material from flowers so material from different um, different organic and raw materials. So if you own that part as well, it's interesting to speak together because you can definitely also have a new way to um, to generate interest and be able to um, to open new uh, opportunity for you. If you're a startup attending the audience as well, I just wanted to highlight Vivatech. Vivatech is uh, the little CES of France, I would say. I call it in Vegas. So basically, it's a more and more international pavilion. Um, I was just speaking to Enterprise Florida to see if uh, maybe we can have something next year, because I think it's really interesting to show the tech. And since uh, Florida now is moving into being a tech space, I think it's really interesting to also be able to show our innovative uh, product and services in the tech industry. Industry. That's going to be uh, if you have any, if you're in other um, sector of industry and if you need more information about trade show, about things that you wanted to attend, please let us know in a QA or just email Madison and I as well if you need more information about that. The next one, I just wanted to tell you that what we can provide to Florida company. So basically, we uh, can do consultation of, uh, of uh, country consultation, meaning information about the this, the, the country, uh, connection with some people, information about the regulation, sector information, basic one. Then we can help you to do a market entry by looking at are we validating the opportunity in France versus another market in Europe? Uh, what are the barriers to, to penetrate the French market? Uh, what do I need to do it? 
Um, so, and then we can organize for you bus uh, business matchmaking. So it could be uh, during a virtual business matchmaking services from Enterprise Florida, but it could be during a trade show as well. And um, I don't know, and Madison will tell you more about that. I'm not that familiar with Grant, but I'm pretty sure that if you attend a trade show is not part of the Enterprise Florida Pavilion, you may have availability to get Grant, but I'll let Madison answer those questions. And uh, we can as well, and that's super, super important, you go to a trade show, but please follow up after this trade show. And the follow up are massive because sometimes we're coming back and we don't have the time to do it. So if you need some support to do that and to uh, to focus on the follow up and see how we can help you, we'll definitely be able to to assist you there. Uh, I just wanted to um, see really quick about uh, this uh, EU and national regulation. Um, because it's going to impact a lot of people, especially because you have products we're going to be labeled in English. So I just want to make sure you, you're all aware about the packaging information with the EU regulation, the CE marking, the labeling in French, and uh, also some product who needed to be harmonized with the French regulation. So um, I have that on the left side and on the right side of the screen, you will see that you have a website from the European Union about doing business in Europe. And you can see a lot of information, uh, mainly about selling into Europe, taxation, public contract, finance and funding. So really important, uh, interesting uh, website, I would say, uh, if you want to penetrate trades on European markets. Here, from my experience, I just wanted to show you the route to the French market. So um, certain products and services will require more time than others. So I just wanted just to tell you that the French market is an open market, but is still very mature and competitive. So um, the, the market entry is quite long in France. So that's why in certain um, uh, sector, I would say you need to take time and you need to make sure you have enough budget plan on exporting and being ready. Um, and you also have to develop the right uh, penetration of market strategy. That means, are you going to use a distributor? Are you going to use an agent? Are you going to start with wholesaler e-commerce? That's something you have to take uh, uh, advantage of. So um, I just wanted to make sure that you know which uh, which channel will be the best for your product and services. So we can give you um, some consultation with Madison. So uh, please let us know if you need any advice on this area as well. And I'd like to finish by uh, my presentation by a testimonial about a Florida company based in the Tampa area who use Enterprise Florida friends uh, services uh, to identify some, um, some distributor and they identify some of them. And I just wanted to finish this uh, little presentation uh, who I hope was useful for you with this uh, testimonial of Libby Fisher. Thank you very much, Madison. The, I'll, I'll get back to you. Thank you very much, Crystal. I think that was fantastic information. Um, I'm gonna give a short overview of some of the ways our programs can also assist you regardless of what market you're interested in. Um, but I did want to mention, since Christelle did cover the aerospace, medical devices, um, food and beverage industries quite well, if any of you who are attending are in a different industry that you would like her to touch base on, maybe during the Q&A session, please feel free to uh, put your industry in the Q&A box and we can, we can uh, discuss those when we have some time. So I'll go through um, the next couple of slides, but then, like I said, we're going to get into Q&A. Um, if you have some commentary that you'd like us to go over as well, feel free to put that in the Q&A box. So a little bit more about Enterprise Florida's international services. So like I mentioned before, we kind of operate in two boats. One is recruiting that foreign investment into the state. And the other thing is supporting our existing Florida businesses and helping them get into exporting and getting into those new markets. Um, we do partner with our different economic development organizations um, and trade organizations around the state. Uh, something I will mention is we do have a very very active newsletter that will provide you with the most recent and up-to-date events that are going on, whether it's an Enterprise Florida trade mission, trade show, or one of our partners, such as um, a federal entity like the Commercial Services uh, webinar or seminar. Um, and if that is something you're interested in being on and you don't already receive that newsletter, please let me know. So these bubbles here, um, I did just mention the newsletter, that one's important, but the other ones are export counseling. So this is where the regional manager titles come in. Uh, there are regional managers located throughout the state. Like I mentioned, I'm in Tampa Bay, but we do have um, some in Orlando, Miami, Jacksonville. Uh, so if your business is uh, in a specific part of the state and you have yet to um, keep in touch with your regional manager, 
that is something I'm happy to put you in touch with. We can go out and talk to you a little bit about your current international strategy, maybe some markets to look into. And that way we can send you tailored events when we have something pop up. Um, Something else, so Christelle mentioned international trade shows. So Enterprise Florida does have Florida pavilions at several trade shows overseas. These are going to be larger shows in some of our state target sectors, like uh, Medica, for example. Um, Farnborough Air Show, Christelle mentioned, she'll be there next week. Um, however, we are also happy to provide support at trade shows that Enterprise Florida does not necessarily have a pavilion at. So if you're going there, whether it's um, you want a grant or you want some assistance on follow-up, and we can work with our international offices afterwards to make sure you get some assistance with those leads. Um, the other things are educational seminars, conferences, uh, trade missions. If you need some assistance with market research, that's something we do have access is to pulling some data. Um, so really any kind of inquiry, make sure you touch base with your regional manager and we can see how we can help. Um, I will go into our next slide to kind of go over our current trade programs and grants. So business matchmaking. So the top two bullet points you see here, you have virtual business matchmaking or you have gold key slash trade missions. So this is where you as a Florida exporter are interested in this specific market and you're going to be set up with direct introductions to potential distributors or partners, um, whatever it is that you're looking for in that market. So the virtual business matchmaking kind of came about during COVID where we couldn't travel quite as much. But what we do is we work with our international offices. Um, you'll fill out an application, a questionnaire. We'll, they'll do some initial research to see um, your product's potential in the market. If we do think there's a good fit, then they'd go ahead and set you up um, on Teams calls with direct introductions to interested parties in that market. Now, gold key slash trade mission is essentially that same matchmaking, but you're actually traveling to that market and having those meetings in person. Um, when I say trade mission, that means uh, a group of Florida companies are going to go to the same market together and they're all doing separate um, matchmaking meetings. Now we do have a grant for this for eligible Florida companies, and I'm happy to go over some of that criteria in a little bit, um, but feel free to put specific questions in the box as well. But our grant will cover um, the cost of that matchmaking fee. So if it's virtual, it's going to, we'll reimburse you after you have the meetings. If you're traveling on a trade mission, we'll reimburse you for the cost of the fee, but we won't reimburse you for the cost of travel. So it's similar grant for each matchmaking program. Now, international trade shows, I know I just mentioned, but I will go over, we do again have a grant for this. So again, for eligible Florida companies who are exhibiting at a trade show, we do have another reimbursement grant that will help you pay for the cost of your booth um, and booth registration and furnishing. That grant is going to cover 75% of that total cost up to $7,500. Again, that doesn't cover things such as travel, um, airfare, but it covers specifically your booth space. The export marketing plan, that's a great program for companies who are new to exporting and they're not sure which uh, markets to target just yet. It's something we partner with the SPDC on in your local regions. You'll kind of fill out a questionnaire, talk about your product. Um, if you have countries you are exporting to, you'll write that down. If not, what they do is they take some time, pull a bunch of indicators on who's importing your product, um, where are other countries, uh, where are they sending this product, all sorts of data and indicators. And then after all the research is done, they'll present this big research program to you. So you can start to tailor your export um, method. Now that plan, we do have a grant. The program itself is $5,000, but Enterprise Florida will cover $4,500 um, for eligible Florida companies. So it's just a $500 fee uh, for those who are eligible. The next thing is the international registration fee. So this would come in very handy uh, when Christelle mentioned that specific registration that health uh, medical device manufacturers might need in order to export their products. We do have an international registration grant that helps reimburse the cost of that application fee. Some of these registrations, especially for the medical device companies, sometimes food companies are really expensive. So if you do have to get a specific uh, certification in order to export your product to a market, um, let us know and we'll tell you if you might be eligible for that grant. Now, website localization is another great program, especially for companies that have a lot of traction by utilizing their website. So they might have an e-commerce portion or something like that. This program is where we help localize your website. That means your US website will work with one of our partners called IBT Online. They'll kind of redo your website and localize it at a target market. So say you have a US website right now, but you want a French website, They'll redo that whole website in French 
in the language, but they'll also make sure that your Google SEO is localized to France. So if someone is searching for your product over in France, even though you're a US-based company, um, your product and your website will still come up. The next thing is a certificate of free sale. So that is a great program for, again, for usually uh, food companies or medical companies that have to have a certificate of origin when they're exporting product overseas. Our Miami office can do those um, digital or um, I believe uh, paper copies as well. But if you have questions on any of these, happy to help you after the program or feel free to put them in the Q&A box um, and we can go over them shortly. Um, since we have a little bit of time, I will just briefly go over the criteria for these grants. So these grants are going to be for Florida manufacturers or service providers. That means that your product or service does have to be done in the state if you are a distributor or wholesaler of a product, but that product is also manufactured in Florida. Um, we may be able to get that grant to you, but again, that's something that we'll take on a case-by-case -case basis. So happy to talk to you about that. Um, you do have to be considered a small business, less than 500 employees, but more than three employees, um, and I believe revenue over 250,000. Um, <clears> but that main criteria, again, make sure your product or service is manufactured in the state. I will mention that all, if you don't qualify for the grants, that does not eliminate you from using our program or having your regional trade manager go out and visit with you. We're happy to help any Florida company that we can. Just those grants are specific to certain criteria. Now, the next webinar in our series, as you know, we do this every single month, is going to be Japan. So that will be on August 4th at 9 a.m. We do have an exciting um, conference, I think, taking place in Orlando called SUS Japan that will also go over uh, next month. Um, and for those of you that may have missed other webinars or you're interested in another market, uh, we do have a microsite for this program. It's www.florida-export.com. You can go in there. You can see the calendar of all upcoming webinars. We do add them pretty frequently. And then all of the webinar recordings from previous webinars are also going to be located on that page. So if you missed, think you missed anything, go ahead on there. You can see what's coming um, and what has already been done. All of our videos are also hosted on the Enterprise Florida YouTube page as well. There is a playlist specific to this webinar series to go ahead and see those recordings. So the same thing will happen with this recording as well. It will be on our YouTube page. Now we're going to get into some q and I'm going to pull it up here. All righty. So first question, Christelle, what are a few of the key business mentality slash cultural differences in doing business in France for U.S. exporters? I think the, the languages is one of them. First of all, you have to make sure that, uh, like I said, you have someone who can know the culture. We have, we are like you guys, a Latin culture, especially in Florida. So I think the relationship are also um, doing really well. And um, I think you also need it, even if everything's go well, to identify your right partner and the right um, way of penetrating the market to make sure that you are going to avoid losing years, time, and money on, uh, on the wrong, maybe, way of penetrating the market. I don't know if I, I hope I answer your question. No, I think that was great. Um, I saw another one pop up in the chat box that I'll get to. Um, what trends are you seeing in terms of French companies investing in and doing business in Florida, industries, regions of Florida, size of companies, job creation, other types of growth trends? So this is an FDI Glenn. question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Glenn, thanks for the question. Uh, good to see you on the webinar. So basically, um, I would say that last year was really hard because after COVID, but to seeing a lot of interest of uh, French company getting back to the US, we see uh, basically the sector will be a little bit really low on um, aerospace, but projects were active before COVID are restarting to be reactivated. Uh, we also see a lot of uh, opportunity for tech versus uh, California or versus now Austin, Texas, I have to say. But we see also the tech and also Miami uh, being labeled during the COVID in April 2020, I think uh, one was labeled the French Tech Miami. So for us, it's like a labeling that between Miami and France, they have existing tech um, community. So that's uh, really interesting for, for the, the French uh, industry and also for French company growing into, into the state of Florida. Um, we also see um, some uh, logistic and transportation opportunity and also some uh, 
I will say more equipment and uh, manufacturing part uh, that they require to manufacture and to uh, be able to serve the client in the US faster than being in Europe and provide uh, their, their equipment and parts. So we're seeing more interest, but definitely we're seeing more interest uh, this year on uh, project. Uh, we're hoping they're all going to land in Florida, and um, but hopefully it's going to be a good year in 2022 of 23 for the, for the state of Florida. And uh, yeah, to answer the question about the size, sometimes they're starting small, but they're adding uh, uh, employment on the ground after after a few months. Uh, you can see they're growing and expanding. Great, thanks, Christelle. Next question here is about setting up a company in France. Um, someone mentioned they speak in the French and I'm interested in setting up a company. Um, do you have a resource that maybe you can point them to? And this is also tech software if you'd like to speak to that industry a little. Okay, so um, just to open a legal entity, depending what you want to do with this legal entity, if it's really a subsidiary that you have to open and operate, if it's something to be into the European market and the French one. So we can definitely refer you to some... Um, a uh, company who are doing, a, it could be CPA or it could be lawyer, who can help you to do this legal entity done in France. It's a little bit longer than the US, you need to expect that. Uh, and also um, um, regarding the, the tech, I will say that uh, depending what you wanted to do, but we had a lot of um, collaboration going on and a lot of French companies were looking to hire tech and software engineer in, uh, in Florida. So I'm assuming that if you are also hire tech and software that you will be interesting for a French company, depending what you wanna do, but I'll be glad to uh, get into more details about the project and, um, and uh, for sure the industry is booming as well as digital, artificial intelligence, um, everything related to um, also, uh, CRM, uh, uh, trying to, to, to a lot of digital uh, information are now in place since COVID. And we were really late on that in French government, at least. So uh, we're seeing a lot of opportunity for tech and software company. Great. Thank you to Chriselle. Um, I have another question kind of about the current I know COVID may be going back up on the rise, but I do have a question about work from home. I know work from home here has become very big in the States. Has it kind of remained big over in France? And would you see that as affecting when maybe our exporters are trying to get in touch with French companies? Has it become kind of just a new normal over there as it has over here? That's what I was saying a week ago. And this week I'm going to change a little bit my mind because we're seeing a lot of case. They're not... Um, saying uh, that face-to-face uh, um, -face is mandatory. What I have to see since COVID, the French are more open and like everybody else in the world to, um, to digital meetings. And what I can suggest as well, it's interesting now to see that, that we've been working with some company who are trying to qualify and see the interest of potential agent and distributor by virtual meeting and try as well after to do really the uh, in-country, uh, I would say, visit potential uh, partners uh, when they qualify those uh, partners already by virtual meetings. So um, I, I think it changed the way of doing the business. And I have to say as well, trade show are really interesting as well because the, the sales was going on in some sector without any trade show. So uh, we saw that some trade show, it was the matter of fact of having the right relationships with the people and trying to be able to promote yourself and uh, having the right marketing material as well. So that's something I said to the French going into the US, you need to adapt your marketing into the US, but same thing for you in Florida, you need to make sure if you are targeting some European country, you have to adapt your marketing to this country. You need to be in French, you need to be a French web page or something, but you can have an agent, you can have, um, if you open a subsidiary, you can have a head of the country manager who could be definitely French, English speaking. So I think you needed to have this uh, cultural uh, aspect between the US and France, who it's really important to succeed there as well. Great, that's very helpful. Um, I other thing I, you did mention, fintech is growing and assure tech. What is assure tech? I haven't heard of that one yet, so we I am curious. It, we call it in France is uh, everything related to assurance, insurance. So for ah. us, for you, it's going to be insure tech, maybe. Okay, okay. <laughs> so uh, I call that 
as your text, so I think I didn't translate it into English, but it's everything related to insurance as well, that we're seeing a lot of different technology coming up. So I think it could be interesting as well, uh, especially insurance in the US being really um, a cost, uh, I would say, and uh, some criteria that you have to get into uh, uh, more details versus the European market. So I think it's interesting as well. And even for FDI, and even if you're a US company working in those kind of industry in the tech, but insurance tech, I think it could be interesting to see what, um, and you may have some opportunity in Europe for the, you for your um, technology. It could be related to software and digital anyway. Awesome. I see Thank a question you. also on Ray asking for hiring French staff. Not sure what you mean, but hiring French staff, it's kind of, um, um, even if we have an employment rate, not like you guys, really low, it's still hard to find and pick up the right people. So you need to be careful about who you're going to hire, especially if you use the first hiring. Uh, if you are manufacturing as well, we can guide you. A little bit like Enterprise Florida, each region in French may have a support. So depending where you wanted to go and what you want to do, we can help you to identify the right people in France to support your recruitment. Great, thank you for noticing that. Um, at this time, I don't think we have any other questions. I think the only other question or comment I would like you to make is maybe an example of a company that's utilized that virtual business matchmaking program. You don't have to name the company, but maybe just the industry that they were in and how it kind of panned out. Okay. So I'm just going to use really the medical device. The one that we made, it was a virtual business matchmaking services. They made a testimonial. They were from Tampa. And I have to say, um, we started, um, they were supposed to, it was in 2020. It was really a uh, during COVID, I think, and basically they were supposed to travel to Barcelona for a trade show. And they used the virtual matchmaking services because they couldn't travel to Europe and they wanted to identify the right um, distributor. So we made a long list of distributor. And then what we did, we qualify and do a little bit of due diligence on those distributor. We made it together a short list with the company. And then we outreach in French with some kind of, with French marketing from the company. Uh, we uh, outreached the distributor and requested a meeting. So Enterprise Florida offices was part of some meetings when they didn't speak English, but mainly all the buyers in those distributor or people referring new product, they were speaking English. So the company at the end succeed to, uh, to secure one distributor in, in France. And it was also a distributor who was, I think, uh, distributing in, in Spain as well. That's so great. It That's was a great success. Example. And I have to say also, um, sometime before doing a business uh, virtual matchmaking services, it's also important for you to identify the right way of selling because e-commerce could be also a good way and don't use a distributor. So I think it's really important to, to see how you're going to penetrate the market and which way you're going to use to do it. Great. That is very helpful, especially for Companies to know that we have international offices all over. So if you need some advice on market penetration, whether it's through distributor or through e-commerce, like you mentioned, um, we are happy to help kind of guide you in the right direction. Um, at the moment, we don't have any more questions in Q&A. So if you have them, please put them now. Um, otherwise, I will leave it to Christelle if you have any final comments you'd like to make. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish I can uh, visit you soon. Okay. It's been two years. So hopefully this year will be a new year for, for international offices to visit Florida. And hopefully we can see you in Tampa, in Jacksonville, or in Orlando, Miami, for the Dell, uh, all the county that we're going to visit in coming months, hopefully. So thank you very much for attending. And uh, I'm there for you. So do not hesitate to send me an email there. We have our uh, information on the website of Enterprise Florida. Perfect. Thank you so much, Christelle, for your time today. And also thank you to our VP of IT, Lynn, for uh, helping us out with this webinar every month. So thank you all so much for joining. Um, and please get in touch with us if you have any more questions. Thank you. Bye-bye.